Hey guys, on today's video, we're going to be looking at a few recent hauls, and of course, we're going to be going through some what's solds. So stick around and we'll jump right in. So here's everything that we got today. It was a nice fall day. It was only in the 40s. So yes, even in the 40s in Texas, we do have garage sales, which I am thankful for. So everything here uh, hanging up and everything on the table paid $55 for everything. So let's jump in and we'll show you what we found. So at the first sale, I got all of these books here and I've already separated them into similar um, series so that I could start listing them. Um, I got 30 books here and these are the, the kind of early reader flat type books. And uh, the lady wanted a dollar a piece, which I would never have paid a dollar a piece for all of these. Um, so I asked her if I could do a bundle deal, and she said sure. And um, I offered her $10 for all the books, which was about, you know, three for a dollar, and she begrudgingly accepted that, so I was appreciative. Um, so I have some Junie B. Jones, some Franklin books. These will get mixed into our other ones that we have on hand, and um, yeah, lotted up, of course. Again, this type of book I would never usually sell as a one-off. This one I would consider it because it's vintage. And of course it is a Care Bears. Um, I believe this one is from 1983. I think I looked it up briefly while I was at the sale. And of course I can never do this one-handed. So let's see here. Yeah, 1983. So and it's, a, it's in really good shape. There's no writing in that one. Looks to be some discoloration in the cover, but that's all right. I think the biggest takeaway from this sale is the stack of Arthur books. There were 18 total. I think one is a duplicate, so I at least have a lot of 17 that I can do for sure. So that was a good one. I have one of the next sales. I found this pair of boys Crocs, uh, but they have like a, a Hot Wheels tie-in, it looks like. I'll have to do some research on that model. They have some a little bit of wear on the heels, but in or, you know, overall condition, they're they're pretty good. Um, at that same sale, I found a couple of these. I've done fairly okay with you know military stuff or uh, combat uniform stuff, but this was actually kind of interesting. So it's just a it's a pouch. There's a snap, of course, and behind there is a pouch. But what I looked when I looked and saw what it was for, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So it's a forty millimeter grenade pouch. So. You know, if anyone has any 40 millimeter grenades that they're wanting to carry around, I can certainly help out with some pouches. Paid a dollar each for those. So that was a fairly good buy. I haven't even looked those up. I got to do some more research. So the next sale was less better than I thought, or less, well, whatever. I thought it was going to be good. It might still turn out to be good, but... Um, We'll see. So I got this set of four canisters. These are nesting canisters. And this one extra wider one, which I don't think was originally part of the set, um, but obviously it's in the same series. So these, of course, all nest together. And they were all inside one another at the sale. However, when I came home, I realized that this one did not have the lid. So I have three canisters with lids and one without but the cool thing is, is that with Tupperware, there is a little model number, and you can see this is 807-8. And so I actually messaged someone on eBay that is offering the same set, or one of these same canisters, and I've asked them what the, the model is of the lid, because the lids also contain a number as well. So all this vintage Tupperware, you can I don't know if the camera can pick it up. It's right underneath there, but I, don't, I think it's too small. But on the very bottom, that 6 o'clock side here is where that number is. So that lid would correspond to this canister, but I don't know what the model is, so I'd have to look it up. And they're not sequential, so even though this is, you know, 8-0-something or other, the, the model for the lids are completely different. So, anywho, um, I might have to buy that lid separately so that I can get a complete set and then whether or not I add this to the set or not remains to be seen. I might just end up selling this on its own. But this set for all five pieces was $20, which was more than I wanted to pay. 
but I saw comps for this four piece set with lids that were that were pretty good. And I figured that would go for maybe 15 by itself. Maybe not, maybe 10, I don't know. I'll have to do some more research. But at that same sale, I found these as well. So this is a Judy Blue, um, kind of a camo denim jacket. And again, Judy Blue, this has new with tags. It was from a boutique, um, but it's definitely new. I paid $10 for it, but I know that Judy Blue stuff sells pretty well. At least they're, the jeans do well for us. Um, I saw a comp on eBay for 30 I believe, for this, so we'll, we'll give it a try. But behind that, this is actually a pretty cool find, I think, is a J. Crew. Now, what's nice about it, it's lamb's wool and cashmere. Looked to be in really good condition, and when I asked, it wasn't marked for price, but when I asked about it, it was only $2. So I couldn't pass that up for $2, especially going into the winter season here. And it was cold enough to people would have want, wanted to wear that today. So we'll just hang that up there. At another sale, I picked up this Costa hat. I heard that uh, that's a fairly good brand to look out for. I don't know. I've never picked one up. I haven't done any research on this, but I figured I'd give it a shot. Inside's a little bit yellow, but I might be able to scrub that out with some OxyClean or, or whatnot. At another sale, I found these books. They have this Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. It's in good shape. And uh, the comps looked decent on this one. So I decided to pick that up. I wasn't sure of the price initially. Um, this was a stack of, I believe it's Saxon. Yeah, Saxon phonics and spelling books. These were all lotted together and they wanted a dollar for it. Don't know if it's a full set or what, but I'm gonna definitely, definitely wanted to pick that up for a dollar. This was a, another similar one. Um, Level B, Fluency Readers. This was sealed, so this is new. It's never been opened. So I thought that was kind of cool as well. And I did look this up briefly um, at the sale because I wasn't sure that I wanted to buy it. And this had a really crazy comp for like 40-some dollars. Um, don't know if that was a fluke or what, so I, I figured I'd pick it up for a dollar. And then when I asked about this one, he said, yeah, just throw it in for free. So I got this cookbook and these two lots of books for two bucks. So that was a really good deal. And then I believe, yeah, the last thing in this sale is right here. And if you remember from last time uh, what I had, it's something similar. This is, of course, a vintage backgammon set. And I will open it up because, excuse me, the finger there. There we go. You can kind of see it. It's in really good condition. No rips, no tears. It's even got the instructions. It's got the dice, or the dice cups. Um, these pieces are actually pretty nice. They kind of have a dotted pattern on it. So I have 15 of those, 15 of those, two of each color die. I'm missing the coupling die or the double die. I don't know. I've never played the game. I've actually never learned how to play backgammon. Um, but it was a really nice set. Couldn't pass it up for five bucks. So I can... And more than likely sell it as is. So again, that was the haul for today. Nothing, nothing major, no super home runs, but I think for $55, did okay. So thanks for watching. We'll go on to the next section. All right, let's do another haul segment here. Uh, we went to a number of Goodwills today, and um, I have one other larger item off screen, which I'll show here in a moment. But all told, we spent about $85 today. So let's jump in and I'll show you what we picked up. So we were really kind of being choosy at these Goodwills because Goodwills have raised their prices dramatically, it seems. So um, we had to really be kind of choosy as to what we wanted to pick up. But this was, I think, a, a really cool find for $3. It was the sealed set of Hard Rock Cafe Niagara Falls drumsticks. Um, so obviously some restaurant collectibles here. Um, saw some sold comps for upwards of $30 or so, but uh, definitely was a pretty cool pickup. And found this cool Georgia Bulldogs hat, and I believe that's what that is. There's some cool embroidery on the front, and then underneath there's some really cool designs as well. And then there's this cool Save the Bees hat, and it was a Smithsonian hat. So some cool finds. A couple of Stampin' Up! stamp sets. I paid $3 each for these. 
um, a little bit more than what I like to pay, but we used some rewards points to knock down our final total. So it dropped down the individual buy cost um, a little bit. So that always helps. Our hats were $2.79 each, which again is a little bit more than what I like to buy hats for, but of course it's Goodwill prices. So what are you going to do? Um, found these new with tags, um, Army, what are called BDUs or battle dress uniform tops. It's basically, you know, Army uniform stuff. Uh, it's the digital camo, so it's definitely in a newer style, but they are new with tags. And of course, I paid a little bit more than what I wanted to, $10.99 each for those. But comps seem to be, you know, okay um, once I get those detagged. And of course, uh, photographed and listed, hopefully we'll do well on that. At uh, one of the next stores, we picked up this pair of kids Crocs, kind of colorful there. And this one was one of those Starbucks Boston mugs. You are here. Didn't look this one up, but Starbucks mugs, mugs have done okay for us in the past. And this uh, Cafe Du Monde mug, we've had a number of these as well that have done okay. Kind of slim pickings at that store. That's all we got there. Um, at another store, we found this cool Ariat, um, I don't know what kind of material it is. It's cotton, but it's it's rough. It's not really smooth, but I don't know. I'll have to do some research to see if I can find a, a style number or whatnot, but definitely area out there. You can see the logo. Um, found another cool coffee mug. It's a biology. It has some cell diagrams and some interesting things there on the other side. Let's see here, it shows some photosynthesis, some DNA, so kind of a cool thing, biology right there. And uh, of course, Jessica is a sucker for the 3D mugs. So we found these cool Fox mugs. And this is a Threshold, which is a Target brand. So I didn't mind picking these up. I know that we've done okay with the Threshold mugs in the past, but they're cute. Found a cool pair of Olakai shoes. I've never found these before, but I have seen that symbol on some other reseller videos before, so I definitely knew that that was something to look out for. But uh, this is our first pair of those. And this was probably the, the find of the day at that store, at least. This is a cool Department 56. You can kind of see it there. Uh, there's a, there's a hole for a light. But it's a ghost, of course, with a jack-o'-lantern. A little bit just past Halloween. $6.59 for that. But uh, I think comps can be in the 20 to 30 range for that. But that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's just after Halloween. So either someone unloaded it as they didn't want it anymore, or someone just didn't buy it in time for Halloween. But that's all right. Like I said, I do have one other larger item that we're going to take a look at here momentarily. But that's all the smaller finds from today's haul. So stick with me one second, and I'll reset for the next thing. All right, guys, check this out. This is this is something that's going to be entirely outside of my comfort zone. Uh, but when we saw it, um, we were kind of hemming and hawing over it. We actually got this at the first store, so where we got this stuff. So we actually did use our our bonus points or our rewards points to lower the cost. Uh, this is going to be upside down, but you can see I did pay $30 initially for this bin. I mean, it is a huge bin of toys. It probably weighs close to, I don't know, 20, 25 pounds. Let me see if I can turn it around without knocking anything off the table. Um, but it's just a hodgepodge of miscellaneous toys. Some things that I thought we might be able to lot up right away was I saw a Snoopy. There's a couple of Snoopies in here. And I did see some other Snoopy-related items in here elsewhere. But I also saw something Mario-related. I think there's a Luigi right here. So I, I don't know. Like I said, $30 is kind of a big investment for this unknown. I, I don't like to throw away money, of course. But we're going we're gonna to take a shot at it and see. Jess was excited to open this up and, and dig through it. And of course, my little daughter <laughs> wanted to dive right in when we got it home. So she was pretty excited to, to pick out some stuff for herself. So we'll be monitoring this uh, over the, the course of the next probably few videos just to see 
hopefully we'll update you guys on uh, what sort of lots we've been able to make or some of the progress that we've been having, you know, gone through this. Uh, I'd like to say that we can start bright and early tomorrow going through this, but, you know, just like anything else, we'll have to carve out some time to go through it. So, but again, out of my comfort zone for sure, um, but I think it'll be fun in the end. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this segment. All right, at this point, let's go through some things that have sold out of our eBay store over the last little while. Starting off the list, we have this 9-inch New With Tags Esmeralda the Calico Cat by Aurora, which sold for $13.19 plus shipping. This next sale was pretty cool. My mother had given me some antique Victorian Valentine's Day cards from the turn of the century. Some of them were dated in the late 1890s, I think 1899, and then the rest were dated at the early uh, 1900s. And so they were very ornate, very intricate, um, very meticulously made for the, the time. And they were actually pretty cool to, to have. Some of them were, most of them were die cut. Um, so, and they, they were made with layers and then stuck together with strips of paper so that they could be expanded. Uh, so they were very cool. I didn't know that they even did that sort of thing back at the turn of the century. So very cool to see. So I ended up lotting them all up and selling them as a set of 15. So we sold that set of 15 antique Victorian Valentine Day die cut 3D tiered greeting cards. Um, this was actually an international sale, which sold for $49.99 plus shipping. Next up was this pair of Guess faux leather full side zip riding boots, which sold for $13.99 plus shipping. After that was this cool vintage Budweiser Budman lapel pin, and he ended up selling for $6.99 plus shipping. Following that was this Prana light yellow long sleeve tunic, which sold for $19.99 plus shipping. And after that was this vintage Three Rivers Jack Daniels number no. 7 button-down shirt, and it sold for $17.99 plus shipping. Then we had someone come in and pick up this vintage 1979 Sesame Street yellow metal lunchbox. Uh, did not have a thermos, and so we ended up selling it for $13.49 plus shipping. And after that was this pair of Gianni Binney side zip black suede fringe ankle boots, which sold for $22 plus shipping. Then the last one of these finally sold. This was the new and package Minecraft Jungle Dwellers figure pack. And this last one sold for $9.49 plus shipping. Up next was an anime DVD from the Great Anime Sale. This was Eden of the East, the complete series, 11 episodes on two discs, and it sold for $35.99 plus shipping. Following that was this 2007 Call Your Mother coffee mug. Uh, this mug sold for $7.99 plus shipping. If you saw one of the last videos where I go into detail about a major shipping disaster that I ran into, this was the sale that I was referring to. This was the set of 27 vintage Avon perfume and cologne bottles. Uh, took an offer of $74.99 plus shipping. I'll put a link down below to this video that I was talking about in the description where I go into all of the great detail that I took to ship these items and come to find out that I couldn't send them through UPS. I had to go through the, the post office, which ended up costing me an arm and a leg. So check that video out if you'd like. Next up, we had this Krispy Kreme embroidered logo baseball hat, and it ended up selling for $9.99 plus shipping. The next sale was a cool mug. This was a New York graffiti artwork mug, and it sold for $11.04 plus shipping. And then following that, we had this Stampin' Up! Triple Threat Flower. It was a one-piece rubber stamp, and it ended up selling for $7.19 free shipping. Up next was a 15-inch brown Build-A-Bear, complete with shirt, jeans, and Skechers, and he ended up selling for $17.99 plus shipping. Then we had a Scentsy base go out the door. This was a new-in-box Scentsy 5-inch round brown metal pedestal wax warmer base, and it sold for $8.54 plus shipping. Next up was this lot of 13 Berenstain Bears early reader paperback books, and these sold for $14.24 plus shipping. And following that, we had this New With Tags 12-inch Squishmallow named Elva. It was a Halloween tombstone plush. 
and it sold for $34.99 plus shipping. Next up was this vintage 1991 Toxic Crusaders action figure named Toxie, who had a bandolier as an accessory, and he ended up selling for $24.99 plus shipping. Following that was this Giardelli chocolate jumbo coffee mug, which sold for $6 plus shipping. And next up was another Squishmallows. This was a Newith Tag Kalani, the fall pumpkin with scarf. It was an 18 inch version and she ended up selling for $71.24 plus shipping. Really great sale there. Next up was this 13 inch glow in the dark bedtime Care Bear, which sold for $12.99 plus shipping. Then we had this Stampin' Up! Large Flower Paper Punch, which sold for $12.99 plus shipping. Then we had this New in Box Hallmark Ornament sell. It was from 2016. It was called Newfound Friends from the movie Finding Dory, and this sold for $34.99 plus shipping. This next item was something that I had found in an existing video game lot. Ended up selling it on a best offer, but at least it's out the door. It was the Battlefield Vietnam uh, game manual only for a 2004 PC game, and this ended up selling for $1.60 plus shipping. After that, we had this True Religion Women's Size XL button-down pink western plaid flannel shirt, which sold for $18.99 plus shipping. And the last eBay item out of this round was the Democracy Women's Size 16 Absolution Black Stretch Denim Jeans, which sold for $22.99 plus shipping. And real quickly, we'll run through some Poshmark sales as well. Uh, kicking off that list is this pair of Levi's 721 Women's Size 31 High Rise Skinny Jeans, and they ended up selling for $20. After that was this pair of Timberland Women's Size 8 uh, Black Leather Clog Hiking Shoes, and these ended up selling for $30. Following that was this pair of Lucky Brand Men's Jeans, these were the 221 straight leg variety, and they ended up selling for $20. And the last Poshmark sale of this time period was this personalized Christopher 3D name mug, and it ended up selling for $5. And finally, we'll also run through some items that have sold out of our Mercari store as well. Kicking off that list, we have this Robert Graham striped checker button-up shirt, which sold for $17. After that, this Disney Muppets Animal Snapback Adjustable Baseball Hat, which sold for $10. Then we had this various lot of rubber stamps from Stampin' Up! This was a five-piece set, which ended up selling for $8. And then we took an offer on this Humble figurine. It was named One More Berry, and the offer was for $8. Then we sold this New With Tags Claire's Exclusive Squeezimals Purple Halloween Bat, which ended up selling for $7. And the last item to sell out of the Mercari store and the last item of today are these pair of Hey Dudes, women's size seven, Wendy tie-dye, navy pink lace-up sneakers, which ended up selling for $25. Well, that's about all that I have for today's video. I know it wasn't anything exciting or flashy, but it was definitely some good bread and butter items that sold out of our store. And it's, you know, those kinds of items that just keep the stores running. Hopefully it won't take me another three or four weeks to get out another video. Um, I know that I've been backlogged with a number of things here that have taken my attention away from, from getting videos out. And of course, these items that have sold of our eBay store were from, I think it was uh, early to, to mid-October. So I'm well behind in, in making videos. So my goal is to start putting out a little bit more content a little bit more often. Um, the videos may be a little bit shorter, but hopefully once I can catch up on all of my backlog of what sold, and then we can be more regular on the video release schedule. Um, and so hopefully we'll get some, some better engagement that way as well. So with that, I appreciate everyone watching thus far, especially all the way to the end. If you don't mind, go ahead and like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll catch you on the next one.